We're here with Jen Winters, who is the Recreation Program Supervisor with the Iredell County Parks and Recreation Department. Thank you for coming on the show this morning. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. We were particularly interested in talking to you about the Outdoor Education Center. Sure. I had actually only heard about that until recently. Yep. So could you give us a little bit of background and let us know how long it's been around? Sure. Um, it's, it's actually a, a pretty unique facility. Not mm -hmm. a lot of people know about it. Um, it's been at that particular site since 1997. Oh, okay. um, so, you know, 12 years and, and going strong. So um, originally we actually used to have a ropes challenge course facility up in the northern part of the county um, around the mid 80s and then when that lease was up they actually uh, moved to this part of the county um, you know you've got more population base here um, plus the property that we're at was actually um, a partial donation and partial purchase oh, okay. um, it was a partial donation from the Cornelius family which is in Mooresville there's Cornelius mm -hmm. Road um, we are off of Bluefield Road and then um, also with Crescent Resources, partial donation from them as well. So, so what was the initial mission of putting a ropes course in this area? Um, well, really, once they, they had the one in the northern part of the county mm -hmm. and people really seemed to enjoy it, I mean, they did over a thousand programs in the, the time that they were there. Um, so when the lease was not renewed, they really wanted to continue that sort of programming and have an opportunity um, for people to still do um, ropes challenge course programs, uh, climbing tower, things like that. Uh, and, and so by acquiring this property, they were able to do that. Um, the demand for it is there. Um, you know, we have all all types of groups come out. Um, we have youth groups come out, uh, schools, um, church groups. Uh, That's how we heard about it was through the school. But I, right. like Jennifer, I had never heard mm -hmm. of it before. So you really don't put it out there to the public as much, but more through. We really, we really don't advertise. Um, all the, the programming we get is really word of mouth. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, but that, that keeps us busy. And so we really haven't had the need to advertise. And what age group do, can you start with? Um, we start usually, um, it depends on what type of program you do. Mm -hmm. um, we do have the ropes challenge course, which has low and high course elements. We have. And what exactly is a ropes course? So when. Um, basically, it's a, a series of um, activities or elements, as mm -hmm. we like to call them, designed specifically um, to help a group reach a goal that they may have. Mm -hmm. um, so low course type elements are basically those activities that are going to be on the ground or very close to the ground. Um, does not require any sort of equipment as far as a harness or ropes or anything like that. Um, the high courses is, is what you typically think of when you hear people talk about zip lines okay. and things like that. Okay. Um, we do have um, probably 20 or so high course elements um, and that does require a ha harness, ropes, helmet, that sort so of thing. So that's the kind of equipment okay. that Yep, here. that's the equipment here. Um, this is just our standard helmet. Mm -hmm. um, we have a couple different types, but really anytime you're doing a high course program, um, <clears throat> we require them to wear helmets, um, mostly for anything that might be falling from above. And we've got some big acorns even that <laughs> these are helpful for. So yeah. um, not just equipment, things like that. Hmm. Um, we also have our harness. This is just the standard set up here and then we have several different ways that, that participants can be attached um, to enter the high course. One is this, um, here we call this lobster claws and so this would be looped through their um, mm -hmm. loop right here on their harness and there's two separate ropes so once they get into the high course they can actually transition from one element to another and still be attached to something the entire time. Um, okay. The rope here, um, this is just obviously not a full rope, it's just a sample. Mm -hmm. um, with this carabiner is another way that they can enter. Um, they would get clipped into the same loop and actually this rope would go up into the high course and back down to someone, one of our staff on the ground um, who is controlling um, basically the movement of their rope. Um, so is there an age requirement or size requirement to be able to do the high course because um, that sounds high like... High course generally we say around 10 or 11 years old. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, just for maturity purposes and confidence, you know, if you put kids that are much younger than that, um, it's going to be not so much of a positive experience for them. Mm -hmm. um, we really try to, to not make this like an amusement park. Right. Uh, we really have the intention of, you know, groups coming out and trying to get something out of their day from being they, there. And that was one of my questions too. Okay. What are the benefits or are the skills they're going to learn from, from coming to the course, either as a group or? Um, it, it, it depends. Um, when people call us and say that they're interested in coming out, we have a conversation with them about mm -hmm. what their goals are. Um, and so based on that information, we select specific activities during their time out there to sort of help them 
practice or work towards those goals. So for example, mm -hmm. um, if you have a group that really wants to work on uh, leadership skills within mm -hmm. their group, we have certain activities that we can design to help bring out the leaders and also help them be more effective maybe at communicating with people in the group. Um, so it really just depends on what So there's challenges that they're given oh, yes, yes. while they're there. Yeah, it's, it's a sequence of events. Uh, normally groups will come out most often for a full day program, which is about eight hours long. Mm -hmm. um, within that time, they come out, um, we do some introductions, we, we have a, a game, usually a warm-up game, just to get them um, relaxed and get their blood moving, and then we'll, um, we'll move in to talking about goals and reasons why they're there and what they want to get out of the program. Mm -hmm. um, and we normally have them you know, write it down in some way um, or do an activity that, that reinforces to everyone in the group that, that shared experience that they want to get out of it. Um, from there we go into normally two low course elements with the group. Um, we also refer to them as team challenges. So everything is sequenced in a way that they get progressively harder. And what's an example of a low course? I mean, I think of low course, I'm thinking, are you climbing on small rope ladders? Are you? Um, you, you can. Okay. Um, they can be structures um, such as wooden platforms, okay. um, even a cable a couple feet off the ground okay. or beam just off the ground, blocks, things like that. Um, or we can do um, mobile low course elements, which or some even require no props. So um, we could even take these activities somewhere else to someone's company if they wanted us to come out and do a program for them. Yes, you do we that have, as well. Yeah, okay. we have things that could come out. I mean, we do not only youth, but we have adult groups that come out and even corporate groups as well. Yeah, I would so. think that it would be really good for corporate team building. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it is. And, you know, a, a lot of groups, that, particularly with adults, you, you tend to get more resistance because their company tells them they have to be out there, so they're not right. as open-minded when they first come out, and they don't know what to expect. And uh, so the first part of our day, a lot of times, is just getting them comfortable with the idea of why they're there mm -hmm. um, and then helping them realize that, you know, this can be a good outlet for them to, to work on their goals and realize their potential as a group. And there's also a climbing tower? We do. We have a 50-foot um, a climbing tower. Um, you can climb up uh, about 30 to 35 feet on two of the sides. And then uh, one of the sides is actually um, for rappelling. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a flat sided wall, and you go off the top edge on a rope and basically walk yourself down. Mm -hmm. Now, can the public go, or do you have to be um, part of a group? It or? is open by appointment only. Okay. Um, generally, we do um, groups of ten or more. Okay. Um, our average is about twenty to thirty people per group. We can do larger groups than that. We just have to have enough advance notice to have staff and work out logistics and things like that. Um, but generally, in a full day, we say you know ten to roughly thirty or so people, okay. um, at least two weeks notice, so that you know we can line up the staff to be out there, um, work on the goals, get an idea of the activities we want to do with the group, and be prepared for them to come out there. So um, the facility is not open unless we have a scheduled program to be out there. Okay, great. And just to finish up, the staff that do they are trained in mm -hmm. what kind of background do they, your staff? Um, well, there's really no, at, at this point, no national authority okay. um, over ropes course facilitation. Um, there is a, an international body called the Association for Challenge Course Technology mm -hmm. um, that is creating a set of standards. Um, uh, facilitator certification standards and we have most of our staff have gone through that there's different okay. levels of certifications that you can get um, I've been through the training myself we have trainings every year for our staff some in-house and some from um, accredited vendors that come in and do the trainings for us um, most of our staff we probably have 15 or 20 they're actually part-time mm -hmm. um, so most of them have full-time jobs elsewhere or some just work a lot of our programs to sort of basically create a full-time job uh, and then there's three of us within the department that are full-time and we go out and work on an as-needed basis and facilitate as well as other programs that it we have. It sounds like department. a great program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We're really proud of it and, you know, like I said, we have, you know, a lot of groups that come out. We probably have 15 or 20 a month, wow. um, up to 30 or so on a busy month, but we also do, um, we have a camping a uh, site primitive camping area that has five shelters at that facility, um, the climbing tower. Um, we do off-site programs such as canoeing and rock hmm. climbing. Um, so there, you know, and environmental education. We have a lot of fourth grade classes that will come out um, and, and do instruction for like wildlife tracking hmm. or a water stream study. 
um, or tree identification, things like that. Yeah. So. yeah, you can look on, you have, if you want to get a brochure, you actually mm -hmm. you can go to their website, yep. and um, but it does say Nature Challenge Teamwork and Fun. <laughs> yep. yep. So there's a great little brochure that kind of outlines that with pictures of the tower and the repelling. And, and the website's great too, and you can find the link on our local links page on lkansavings.com. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for coming on the show. It's Thanks great for information, me. really thank informative. You. Thank you. Thanks.